Okay, so I've now prepared the fountain with um, some colour in the water in the top tank. Um, I was going to use food colouring, but it doesn't work so well, so I've decided to bring out the big guns. Um, I've used potassium permanganate, also known as Condi's crystals. Stuff's really nice, a crystal or two in several litres of water will turn it a really nice dark magenta colour like we have here. So, um, the system's basically back to scratch again. I've got a, a tank full of purple water in uh, the high vessel. I've got uh, a small amount of clear water in the low vessel, so if the water from here ends up in here, this will start to turn purple. And the bowl at the top's empty, so I'm going to have to fill that up with water and start again from scratch. So we'll put this one down on the floor, same as we did before. And we'll put some water in the bowl. And again, I'll put clear water in the bowl this time, just to prove to you that the purple water, what's really doing the magic here is the water that comes from down here, rather than the water that comes from up here, okay? And so... Clear water back in the top. And same as last time, we're going to have to take a few seconds just to get this thing running again while uh, all the air purges out of the lines. There we go. Sometimes it, takes, it pays just to fiddle with the lines a little bit because you need to get them to uh, work properly. And so now you can see that the fountains are running again. This time we've got a uh, purple fountain coming out. And you'll notice that the water up here is now purple. Water down here in the other bottle is still clear, at least for the moment. We'll see how that goes. That will soon change. Some of you might already spot there's a little bit of purpleness starting to run down this line. So just zooming in again real quick, you can see that the water in the top part has started to go purple and we now have a nice purple fountain coming out the top. You can see it goes all the way up to there. And the water in the top tank is purple and if you have a look at the line running down, you can see that the line running down is now gone purple. And if we get down to the tank on the floor, you notice that the tank on the floor has started to go purple as well, okay? So in the end we've got a net flow of water from this reservoir at the top, up, out of the fountain, back down into the bowl, down into the tank on the floor, which then pressurises the gas. The gas flows back up this clear line that you can see running up the top here, over the loop at the top, into the top of the uh, vessel at the uh, at the top up here, and it pressurises the liquid that drives the force out the top. So I might just let it run for a little bit, and we'll come back and, you, and we'll have a look at how the water levels are going. So it's been running for around about five minutes now and if you're really lucky and I've managed to master the technology you might have even seen a, a, a short section in there where I've sped it up and you can watch the water level decrease. But just to show you uh, that there really is water going from one to the other, I might stop the fountain now and I'll bring this other bottle up and if you compare back with uh, when we first um, started this run, the water level in this bottle was way down here somewhere and the water level in this bottle was actually quite high and you can see that uh, the water level in this bottle has now dropped a long way and this bottle is now quite full, okay? And of course the purple water that was in here has found its way via the fountain up into here and then found its way down to here, okay? Now, to some extent in this process there's a little bit of uphill motion going on. You've got to get the water from here up to here so that it can then fall down to this lower bottle and that's driven by the pressure that occurs when the water pushes up against the air in this vessel and pushes the air across to this vessel to push it down. Okay, It's a little bit like having a, um, a carton of juice with a straw in the top and when you squeeze the juice um, comes out the, uh, out the straw at the top. So you may want to try this at home. You can actually do it fairly simple apparatus, a lot less elegant than I've got. Um, 
Yeah, I, if you have a look around on YouTube, you'll even see that some people have done it with a couple of uh, plastic bottles and plastic straws jammed in between. Um, a couple of tips. One is you want to have really good seals because the thing that drives the water through the, um, through the spout is the pressure that you have in here, okay? And so if you have an air leak in this bottle or in the air hose or in the top of this bottle, then it won't work, okay? Um, other than that, it's not too difficult to do. The other thing that can be a little tricky sometimes is the uh, spout on the top. The width at the end of the spout will determine how high the jet goes. Um, and so the narrower the cross section of the spout, the higher the flow. If you have a wide one like a plastic straw, you'll probably only get a, a jet that comes maybe an inch or two above the top. If you have a nice fine jet like we've got on this one, you can get uh, um, a good uh, meter or so. And if you have a syringe or you have a really nice fine pipette of some sort, you can actually get some pretty good heights. Um, the height is a bit of a double-edged sword, of course, because if it starts spraying out the sides, um, it's not going to fill the bowl terribly well. The process won't work quite as efficiently as it do does if you can capture all the liquid in the top half. Um, the other thing that's really good about having a small spout at the top is that the volume passing through is uh, a bit smaller and so the process of water going from here to here is a bit slower and the fountain runs for a bit longer if you have a smaller spout. Um, other than that, it's fairly foolproof and it's fairly easy to do so if you want to have a try and um, impress your friends, have a go. Um, regarding the Condi's crystals, um, if you're going to try that, you may want to do it somewhere where you're not going to make a mess. These will stain clothes, they'll stain skin, they'll stain just about everything if you're not careful with them. They're also poisonous, so don't eat them. Um, but food colouring works just as well. Um, it's probably just not as obvious as I've done in here. Um, potassium permanganate makes a good water colourant. Um, so I, th I think I'll leave that there and uh, that's Hero's Fountain from um, AD 50. Quite an ingenious little inge invention given that it was uh, first conceived 2000 years ago.